If you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you. One of the most important functions in the body, really, one of the key functions in the body is the maintenance of serum or plasma glucose. Okay? You don't want it to go too high. You don't want it to go too low. Hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia. Okay, so maintenance of blood glucose in the body drives a lot of processes. And we just talked about hormones, signal transduction, receptors. That's how blood glucose is maintained through the action of specific hormones. Okay, so I want you to kind of connect the dots here we don't just hormones are going to regulate many of the processes that contribute to the maintenance of blood glucose level that glucose level in the blood is you don't need to memorize it but roughly it should be somewhere between 80 and 100 milligrams per deciliter that's the normal sort of concentration so there are four distinct metabolic processes that either use up glucose or produce glucose, okay? And I want you to really appreciate uh, what that means and, and kind of uh, appreciate that there's basically a constant regulation or balance between all these four processes okay so i'm going to start with two processes that use glucose okay so here's glucose and the blood it goes into the tissues one of the pro the, one of the ways you can use glucose when there's plenty of it is to store it and where do you store it you store it in two distinct organs liver and muscle how do you store it you store it as a large polysaccharide called glycogen so hence, one use of blood glucose is to store it for later use in the form of glycogen. So that process consumes glucose. That's very important, the term consumes, it uses up glucose by storing it in the form of glycogen. Another process, which we'll talk about later today, that also consumes glucose is glycolysis. And glycolysis consumes glucose by breaking it down into a smaller molecule known as pyruvate. Okay? In doing so, it provides the cell with energy so that's one of the first things I want you to think about when we talk about glycolysis or any other pathway but for glycolysis you want to ask yourself that first important question what is glycolysis for you should be able to answer it. you should be able to say glycolysis is for getting energy out of glucose and most tissues need that energy from glucose okay so here we have two 
important pathways that both consume glucose. In a way, it should be kind of intuitive to say, okay, when do you think the body will consume glucose? Usually when you have plenty of glucose in the bloodstream, right? So, when does that happen? That happens typically after a meal, within four hours after a meal. So this is the first thing I want you to think about, that the consumption of glucose, either by glycogenesis, which is glycogen synthesis, the same as glycogen synthesis, or glycolysis, will occur in a well-fed state. That means your blood glucose is relatively high or close to the high, near 100, 120 milligrams per or a little more. Okay, so, <clears throat> so that's when these uh, glucose consuming processes will occur. There are two other processes involving glucose. Those are as the subtitle shows, those processes, the function is to restore blood glucose. Restore it as it's dropping back to the normal level. And how do you restore blood glucose? Obviously, you, you restore blood glucose by producing glucose. So the body switches, if you want, tissues, specific tissues, switch function in a way and start to produce glucose. How do you produce glucose? By breaking down whatever glycogen was stored in the first place. If you break down glycogen, you produce glucose you release it into the bloodstream, it restores uh, the, the blood level of glucose in the bloodstream. <clears throat> glycogenolysis or glycogen degradation. Again, that's a glucose producing pathway. A fourth or a second glucose producing pathway is something called gluconeogenesis. And that simply means the synthesis of glucose, de novo synthesis of glucose from smaller precursors, smaller molecules, making a new molecule of glucose. So one source of glucose is breakdown of glycogen. The other one is by de novo or new glucose synthesis from smaller molecules. Both of these will contribute to restoring blood glucose to its normal levels. Okay? So you are intuitively, again, should think, okay, when do we need this? When do we need, when does the body need to produce glucose? Typically, when you're in a fasting state. And fasting simply means about five hours without a meal. Okay, so this is important in the big picture. I remember actually when a student a long time ago, and I think it's a good, uh, came up to me and say, you know, Dr. G, I don't, the gluconeogenesis doesn't happen all the time. I said, Are you sure? And he said, yeah, it seems like. I said, well, think about when you go to sleep. Don't, don't you, doesn't your body need some energy? Doesn't your brain need to function? Don't your muscles need to maintain some tone? Actually, these two processes occur all the time. 
especially when you are without a meal for a while, for a few hours, and during sleep. Okay, so, so as you can see, there is a balance between glucose consumption, which usually occurs in a well-fed state, and glucose production, which occurs in a fasting state. Okay? All right, so I, it's very important that you get the big picture. So if you like this video, please subscribe. Thank you.